it's Jane with Scraptastic Yarns and today's Bible reading comes from Judges 13 through 15. As always, let's open up with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking that you bring us closer to you. Give us the desire that we need to study your word, to get closer to you. We know that you want the best for us. And sometimes we find excuses not to do the things that we should be doing. But Lord, most of us find that if we spend those first few moments of our day with you, that it makes our day go so much better and so much easier. And we thank you for that gift. And Lord, we ask that we are a light to others, that we will bring them to your kingdom that in some small way we can plant a seed to bring them to eventual salvation and to your kingdom. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Different pair of glasses today. All right, let's get into it. And the people of Israel again did was what was evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord gave them into the hand of the Philistines for forty years. There was a certain man of Zorah, of the tribe of Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, you are barren and have not born children. But you shall conceive and bear a son. Therefore be careful, and drink no wine or strong drink, and eat nothing unclean, for behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. No razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to save us Israel from the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, A man of God came to me, and his appearance was like that of the appearance of an angel of God, very awesome. I did not ask him where he was from, and he did not tell me his name. But he said to me, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. So then drink no wine or strong drink, and eat nothing clean, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, please let the man of God whom you sent come again to, to us and teach us what we are to do with the child who will be born. And God listened to the, van, the, the voice of Manoah. Her husband was not with her. Ah, I skipped a whole line. Sorry, guys. And God listened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again to the woman as she sat in the field. But, Noah, but, no, but Manoah, her husband, was not with her. So the woman, woman ran quickly and told her husband, Behold, the man who came to me the other day has appeared to me. And Manoah rose and went after his wife and came to the man and said to him, Are you the man who spoke the to this woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now when your words come true, what is this child's manner of life? And what is his mission? And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, Of all that I said to the woman, let her be careful. She may not eat of anything that comes from the vine, neither, drink, n neither let her drink wine or strong drink, or eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded her, let her observe. Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, Please let us detain you and prepare a young goat for you. And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, If you detain me, I will not eat of your food. But if you prepare a burnt offering, then offer it to the Lord. For Manoah did not know that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, What is your name? so that when your words come true, we may honor you. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why do you ask my name? Seeing it is wonderful. 
So Manoah took the young goat with the grain offering and offered it to the rock, to the Lord, to the one who works wonders, and Manoah and his wife were watching. And when the flame went up toward heaven from the altar, the angel of the Lord went up in the flame of the altar. Now Manoah and his wife were watching, and they fell on their faces to the ground. The angel of the Lord appeared no more to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said to his wife, We shall surely die, for we And Manoah said to his wife, We will surely die, for we have seen God. But his wife said to him, if the Lord had meant to kill us, he would have not accepted a burnt offering and a grain offering at our hands, or shown us all these things, or now announced to us such things as these. And the woman bore a son and called his name Samson. And the young man grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to stir in him, Mahanadan, between Zorah and Eshtol. Samson went down to Timnah, and at Timnah he saw one of the daughters of the Philistines. Then he came up and told his father and mother, I saw one of the daughters of the Philistines at Timnah. Now get her for me as my wife. But his father and mother said to him, Is there not a woman among the daughters of your relatives, or among the daughters of, your, of all our people? that you must go take a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she is right in my eyes. His father and mother did not know that it was from the Lord, for he was seeking an opportunity against the Philistines. At that time the Philistines ruled over Israel. Then Samson went down with his father and mother to Timnah, and they came to the vineyards of Timnah. And behold, a young lion came toward him, roaring. Then the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon him, and although he had nothing in his hand, he tore the lion in pieces as one tears a young goat. But he did not tell his father or mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with the woman, and she was right in Samson's eyes. After some days he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion, and behold, there was a swarm of bees in the body of the lion, and honey. He scraped it out into his hands and went on, eating as he went, and he came to his father and mother and gave some to them, and they ate. But he did not tell them that he had scraped the honey from the carcass of the lion. His father went down to the woman, and Samson preferred prepared a feast there, for so the young men used to do. As soon as the people saw him, they brought thirty companions to be with him. And Samson said to them, Let me now put a riddle to you. If you can tell me what it is within the seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you thirty linen garments and thirty changes of clothes. But if you cannot tell me what it is, then you shall give me thirty linen garments and thirty changes of clothes. And they said to him, Put your, put your riddle that we may hear it. And he said to them, Out of the eater came something to eat, out of the strong came something sweet. And in three days they could not solve the riddle. On the fourth day they said to Samson's wife, Entice your husband to tell us what the riddle is, lest we burn you and your father's house with fire. Have you invited us here to impoverish us? And Samson's wife wept over him and said, You only hate me, you do not love me. You have put a riddle to my people, and you have not told me what it is. And he said to her, Behold, I have not told my father nor my mother, and shall I tell you? She wept before him the seven days that their feast lasted, and on the seventh day he told her, because she pressed him hard. Then she told the riddle to her people, and all the people of the city said to him on the seventh day, before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey? 
what is stronger than a lion? And he said to them, If you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have found out my riddle. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon, and struck down thirty men of the town, and took their spoil, and gave the garments to those who had told the riddle. In hot anger he went back to his father's house, and Samson's wife was given to his companion, who had been his best man. After some days at the time of the wheat harvest, Samson went to visit his wife with a young goat, and he said, I will go in to you, my wife, in the chamber. <clears throat> but her father would not allow him to go in. And her father said, I really thought that you utterly hated her, so I gave her to your companion. Is not her younger sister more beautiful than she? Please take her instead. And Samson said to them, This time I shall be innocent in regard to the Philistines when I do them harm. So Samson went and caught thirty foxes and took torches, and he turned them tail to tail and put a torch between each pair of the tails. And when he had set fire to the torches, he let the foxes go into the standing grain of the Philistines, and set fire to the stacked grain and the standing grain, as well as the olive orchards. Then the Philistines, Philistines said, Who has done this? And they said, Samson, the son-in-law of the Temnite, because he has taken his wife and given her to his companion. And the Philistines came up and burned her and her father with fire. And Samson said to them, If this is what you do, I swear I will be avenged on you, and after that I will quit. And he struck them hip and thigh with a great blow, and he went down and stayed in the cleft of the rock of Edom. Then the Philistines came up and encamped in Judah, and made a raid on Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why have you come up against us? They said, We have come up to bind Samson, to do to him as he has did to us. Then three thousand men of Judah went down to the cleft of the rock of Edom, and said to Samson, Do you not know that the Philistines are rulers over us? What then is this that you have done to us? And he said to them, As they did to me, so I have done to them. And they said to him, We have come down to bind you, that we may give you into the hands of the Philistines. And Samson said to them, Swear to me that you will not attack me yourselves. They said to him, No, we will only bind you and give you into their hands. We will surely not kill you. So they bound him with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting to meet him. Then the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon him, and the ropes that were on his arms had become as flax that has caught fire in his bounds. His bonds melted off his hands, and he found the fresh jawbone of a donkey, and put out his hand and took it, and with it he struck one thousand men. And Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey, here I've struck a thousand men. And as soon as he'd finished speaking, he threw away the jawbone out of his hand. And that place was called Ramoth-Lehi. Ramoth and he was very thirsty, and he called upon the Lord and said, You have granted this great salvation by the hand of your servant. And shall I now die of thirst, and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? And God split open the hollow place that is at Lehi, and water came out from it. And when he drank, his spirit returned, and he was revived. Therefore the name of it was called en -Hakar. It is in Lehi to this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines twenty years years. And that is it for today's reading. As always, be kind to one another, love one another, and I will see you again soon. Bye.